What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trash Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Nick. Tonight, well, since I live in Orlando now, why not have an Orlando guest? So today we got up-and-coming hip-hop artist Topaz. So we're going to let the chat fill up a little bit. Just then I'll invite Topaz, a.k.a. Jesse. Topaz will need the latest version of Instagram to join. What? Hmm. I don't know why it's not letting him join the chat. Little bit of tech, technical difficulties on his side. Just wait like a minute. All right, so for the rest of the week though, guys, we got tomorrow Mark Valentino of Blame God plus a whole bunch of other projects. He's in Jab, uh, Stabbed, and um, Forgetting One New York City Shootout. So that's tomorrow. Thursday is Nick Pernito. He's a Gold Hive Media director. Also, if you know him from back in the day, he was in the Bambella Kiss. Um, and then Friday, we have <clears throat> owner of Westfall Recordings and co-owner of Slate Media Group, Anthony Lopardo. And then to close off the week, we have Blue of Fit for an autopsy, dysentery, and exorcist. So I think Jesse has fixed his, yep. It's technical difficulty, let me let's start. Yo. How you doing, man? Good, man, chilling, chilling. How you been? Yeah, just chilling, I guess. Life's been pretty uneventful recently, bro, to be honest. Word. I feel you on that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, what we do in this on this show, I go from all the way from the beginning to the present day. So how did before the the moniker Topaz, when you were just Jesse, what did young Jesse, how did he get into music? So um, <clears throat> long story short, I mean, uh, my buddy passed away my freshman year of high school, and um, I I made a song for him, but I wasn't really, like, planning on continuing to make music at all. You know, I just, uh, I wanted to honor him in some way, and uh, I just felt like a song was the best way for me to express it. Um, it's still out on my SoundCloud right now. It di didn't sound great, but that was, like, that was the very first time that I actually got in front of a mic and, and did something and, and people really like commended me for it and everything. And I felt like I had to keep going, you know, I felt like that was a sign from my buddy that I should keep going with it, you know? So. Word, word. Yeah. So, so that's what, that's how you got into rap. And yeah. The hip hop game. So like, but like from the start, I'm talking about from, List, like getting into music in general though as a kid gotcha how did how, how did that happen um to be honest it was kind of on my own accords because growing up i always like i wasn't big into music but i would listen to music like with my parents in the car and stuff they would always play like country and uh in like 80s classics like i'm from southwest missouri so country's kind of like a big thing there. My dad was particularly uh, in the country. Um, but it wasn't until probably seventh grade or sixth grade 
Um, I started listening to Kendrick Lamar's albums from front to back, like To Pimp a Butterfly, Good Kid, Mad City. And uh, that's kind of where it connected for me, particularly when I heard the song Mad City by Kendrick Lamar. It gives me chills thinking about it right now. But that was like, from then on, hip hop was my genre of just to listen to. You know, I didn't listen to anything else, really. All right. All right. All right. So... So would you did you ever delve back further into like other decades of hip hop? Yeah, uh for a very brief period of time. Uh you know, I I had to respectfully go back and listen to Tupac and and to Biggie and a tribe called Quest of course. Uh Jay-Z. <clears throat> but the old sound, it didn't connect with me as much as the newer sound like with Kendrick. I still think it's good. It was very necessary, but it doesn't really belong in my playlist personally. And I know a lot of people are going to, they want to yell at me when I say shit like that, but I just, I didn't connect as much with the older sound as I did with the newer sound. And I don't know if that's just a generation thing or what, but. Well, I mean, and like, I, I don't know, it might depend on the person who knows, like personally for me, like I grew up in the early 2000s, like, like I grew up around like 90s, early 2000s hip hop. Yeah. So, you know, it's a little bit different for me. But so you're saying like you went back to on, like to pay homage to the like the younger, the older generation of hip hop, which a lot is it, it, really great because a lot of a lot of people in the like you know in their current generation they just stay in that current generation yeah i just uh i felt like i had to i felt like i had to especially since i was showing so much interest in like writing you know that's when i really started to dive back and like learn about the history of hip hop like where it started who started it all that shit so i just i did it basically just to get the knowledge you know I didn't connect with the music as much. Like, it's very powerful storytellers, though. Honestly, they're insanely talented. But for some reason, the newer sounds, they just, they hit more with me. I don't know why. I mean, so, like, would you, if I gave you, like, a top 10 of, like, I'm, say, I'm saying all time, like, influential hip-hop artists to you, what would those be? They got 10. I'm giving so you 10. Because there's a lot. I know there's probably a lot. Yeah, I could give you like three because right. ten is ten is too much. All right, all right. But like influential on hip hop in general or just me? Hip hop in general. Okay. So Jay Z has to be in the conversation. He has to be. Um Yeah, his uh the black album is man. Yo. Man. I mean there's nothing I can really say else about that. I mean Jay-Z has to be in the conversation. Uh, Influence-wise, Tupac also has to be in the conversation. If we're just talking about influence, 100% Tupac. He kind of, he drove hip-hop in a certain way um, that nobody else had really done before, and particularly like West Coast culture. You know, he really pushed that through the entire nation and made an impact all the way across the whole country with what he was going through. And he was kind of like, I don't know, everyone took to Tupac. Everyone kind of attracted to him like a magnet. And there's not many artists that do that. No, that's, very, that's very true. And let me think, number three. Tupac, I got Jay. I'm thinking of influence. I don't want to say the D word. I don't want to say the D word, but I'm thinking of influence only. Influence only in terms of numbers, all that. I got to say Drake. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not saying he, he influenced. He influenced the industry in a major way. Mm. Well, they, I mean, the all three hip hop artists that you just said, like they did influence like the industry in a different way in different ways, mm. in different 100%. times too, you know, so that's, that's what's up. So, but the, I respect that. the ones that I think have the most influence aren't necessarily my favorites by any right. means. 
but when we're talking about influence, those are three names that definitely come to mind immediately. So, so who would who? I'm gonna give you a top five for your favorites then. What would be your okay. top five? Uh, my number one favorite ever since I listened to him for the first time was Dave East. Okay. Dave East is easily my number one. Uh, his flow, the grittiness in his voice. You know, I, I can appreciate he still has some of that old school sound, but definitely puts a newer twist on it. And mm. I really appreciate that. And the uh, the images he paints with his music, like he, it's like he's showing you images, but it's just music, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Um, number two, Kendrick Lamar, easily, easily Kendrick Lamar, he was the first one to get me into hip hop. Like he kind of charged my batteries when it came to hip hop. And yeah, he's always been a huge influence of mine lyrically and his flows are just unbelievable. The way he can inflect his voice with certain flows, it's unmatched. Nobody else can do it how he does it. Three, me personally, I know he has a lot of not so good songs, but his good songs are unbelievable. Uh, Montana of 300 he's I don't know if you've heard of him before um, but he's an artist out of uh, Peoria Illinois like Chicago area and I have never heard anyone spit punchlines as hard as him before his creativity with metaphors double entendres all of that I've never heard anyone else be able to come up with that many and put them back to back in one song like you almost have to keep pausing throughout his songs to catch all the bars it's unmatched and he's probably my biggest influence when it comes to writing because that's what I always try to do in my writing kind of more in the past now I'm trying to just speak my mind but in the past I would always try to just fill up my songs with as many punchlines as possible and I definitely got that influence from Montana um, so that's three number four there's so many, man. Fuck. I'm so sorry I'm taking a pause on this. This is just a really hard question. Um, so Tech Nine, okay. probably number four for me. Um, I'm from Missouri. And uh, in the early days of me listening to hip hop, I vividly remember me and my friends obsessing over Worldwide Shoppers and um just his ability to literally chop like that his speed and his pronunciation while going at that speed it was unbelievable i went through a little phase of listening to just fast rappers and uh tech nine was a big a big part of just the culture of the area i was into like he i grew up in missouri he's from kansas city so and i'm a chiefs fan of course yeah. kansas city's you know, a place I love a lot. So, uh, yeah, he's definitely in my top five. And number five. I'm going to say Cole. J. Cole. Sure. Um, it's almost like when I hear him rap, I could see clearly and I could hear clearly. Like, when I move through life, I have a lot of problems with anxiety and bipolar and stuff. But uh, for some reason, when I hear him rap about the stuff he's rapping about, it has a very uplifting tone to it. And it makes me like believe in myself more. I know that sounds really weird, but when when I hear him rap, it, it really does give me kind of a, a charge. All right. and just the, the things that he has done. I should have talked about him in terms of influence uh, 100%. Like going going platinum on that one album with zero features at all, and he he owned he owned that year in hip hop. That was his year, and the year after that was also his year. So very impressive. He he continues to amaze all of his fans, and uh, he's just an overall great guy. From what I could tell, I've never met him in person, but from what I could tell, he's just a great personality. All right, we're yeah, no, J. Cole. I'm I'm a fan of him, so I listen to him as well. So no, he is some people some people hate on him. I don't know why, but
but I think he's he like for the generation right now, like that's some type of hip hop that I think is just much needed. Without, well, yeah. yeah. The reason the reason a lot of people started hating on Cole is because Cole was talking shit on all these mumble rappers. You know? Mm -hmm. He was talking shit on all the newer generation of rappers coming up. And my generation did not like that at all because they love their bullshit artists so much. So <laughs> Well, you know, like in, in that, and like you said, you spoke about your generation. What, they, and you said bullshit artists. What, what artists do you think, all right, what artists do you think are fire? What, I'm going to give you three that are fire, three that are whack. So just name three that you think are whack, three that are fi straight fire. All right. So three whack, Lil Pump is easily on that list. He's always been on that list for me. Uh, he's a terrible person. He's insanely ignorant. I don't think he deserves the money or the fame that he's gotten at all. Um, number two, Trash. Uh, Lil Xan. He doesn't make music anymore, thankfully. Uh, he's also a very ignorant soul. And, um, you know, he's probably pretty damaged. Um, but... I hate his attitude. I hate his image. Um, I hated the very first song that he ever put out that everyone fell in love with. I, I never got it. And number three, this is the number one trashiest rapper, in my opinion, right now is Playboy Cardi. A hundred percent. He just yaps like a chihuahua on every one of his songs. I don't understand the appeal to that. They're great instrumentals. Like the beats are fantastic. But I don't, I don't get the little yapper dog voice thing. I don't understand that. There's no substance to that. It's valid. And, it's valid. All right, you said three fire, mm -hmm. three fire newer artists. Definitely Lil Baby. Um, you know, I can only name a handful of songs that I really hated by him. Uh, he's he pops up a lot in my personal playlist. Uh, so he's he's one I've definitely been following a lot for the past few years. Um, Travis Thompson is another one. He's an artist out of Seattle. Um, he, he's like a, he's a rapper and a vocalist at the same time. He kind of goes in between singing and rapping. Uh, he's not super popular. Like he's not exactly as mainstream as some of these other guys are. He kind of has his own lane, but the melodies that he chooses and his voice inflection, you could feel every emotion in his voice. And I think it's, I always love hearing that from artists. So he's one to look out for right now as well. And there's so many new artists right now. Jesus Christ. Who else have I been listening to? Um, Vori. He's not really a rapper. He's kind of more R&B. So I really shouldn't talk about Vori. But Vori, Vori has a very unique voice. Have you ever listened to Vori? No. Yeah, he has a very unique, like, almost ghostly voice. It's, he doesn't sound like Michael Jackson, but he has that ghostly quality to his voice, kind of like Michael Jackson had. It's like a haunting sort of sound. It's really interesting. Um. I'm trying to think of another rapper that I've been banging a lot. Uh, Lil Durk has been up there. I'm kind of off and on about Lil Durk. Um, I love his flows. I love his inflection. I love his ability to tell a story. However, I understand it's his upbringing and everything, but I haven't heard a single like positive song from him. I don't think I've heard him say a positive thing in his songs, like, you know, that could inspire people. You know, most of it is insanely violent and like descriptive and i understand there's a lane for that in hip-hop like it's it's street shit but i'm kind of on the fence about it because it's just when i hear negativity that much it like takes a toll on me i don't know that's valid as fuck man yeah you know it does when you hear mad negativity it just uh, it takes a toll on you with a lot of shit you know even with like you know just having negative shit around you same type of thing you know yeah, I'm just to the point where, like, you know, back in the day when I was in, like, high school and stuff, I could bop my head to all the murder shit, you know? I could just totally 
check out and just have fun with it. But now I have a harder time doing that. I don't know where that flipped for me, but I really do have a harder time like enjoying music about homicide. You know, yeah. is it is it because like you started writing music or was this? No, this was fairly recent. Like, so I had been I had been writing for a long time. It was kind of more in the past two years that I've been noticing like when I hear very descriptive, violent, just like where there's like no hope in the person's voice to like get out of that situation or get better at all. And it, it hurts me a lot too, you know, seeing someone who's made it out, you know, who's made all this money, they're still wrapped up in all of that, you know? And that, that's really saddening to me because I, I hear nothing but talent when I hear someone like Lil Durk rap, but it's, it makes me really sad to hear that he's still in that situation. You know, it's really sad. Yeah. You know, like, uh, it, it seems like a lot, you know, a lot of new age rappers, they have like, you know, it's funny because Lil, Lil Xan definitely seemed like he had some sort of issues and shit. There was like a lot of, like some shit on TMZ, something like that, where he like fucked his own car up. And, you know, there's just like other, like all these like different hip hop artists where it's just like, at least to me, it's just like, it's like you went into Fortnite and created your character. <laughs> you yeah, know? dude. Yeah, when you think about it, like when you see a lot of these rappers walk around, it's like they look like a creative player almost. You know, like when you play NBA like or 2K, one of those games or some shit, and you could totally customize. Yeah, it's like a customizable character in a way. Do you think? Uh, do you think that like the, like most new age rappers that they care more about their image than their music? One hundred percent. I'm not gonna say all of them, but definitely most of them. Uh, and it's not entirely their fault. It's like image matters more to the listener now than it ever did before. Mm. You know, and that's just that's unfortunately the world we're in right now. The, the image means everything, like the Instagram, you know, flashing the money all the time. Like, I feel like we've seen enough of that, but that's that's what sells. That's what people want is that image. They don't necessarily want raw talent anymore. There are people who do, but for the most part, like my generation in particular, they want what's popular. So do you think with that, being said that do you not like the way that mainstream hip hop is going the direction yeah i'm not a fan of it um mainly i'm not a fan of like major labels um i think they're slimy they're thieves and they will always fuck somebody over always they could buy your manager they could buy your lawyers they could do anything that they want to as soon as you sign your name on that. And I think the labels have a lot to do with it. it it's mostly their fault. Hmm. That's, yeah, well. Because the, la the labels are the ones that are pushing all this shit because they're the ones who control the stream of whatever's coming out of that artist. You know, they, hmm. they completely control that shit, so. Yeah. It's, it, that's definitely true because they'll pump out whatever and you know they'll even just pick up somebody and like you said they'll just completely just be like this is your image now this is what you're gonna write about and off on that they could have probably been a really fucking great rapper before that but then it just goes downhill and the fucking shitty part is lyrically pop music in general this day and age is at a third grade reading level you're right. You're That's... right. And it's like, it's a broken record. Like, a lot of rap, they just say the same shit in all the songs. It, it may be a different flow, different voice, but I, I hear a lot of the same phrases in a lot of songs I listen to nowadays. Mm. I, I mean, it's been like that for probably since like 2016. 2016 was the year where all the mumble rappers really hit, and it was off to the races from there. 
No, that's true. That was that was yeah. That was with like you know when Lil like Lil Uzi Vert. Yeah, Josh with that out. with that double XL freshman cover. You know, I am a fan of a couple of those guys at this point. Um, but at the time, I was not a fan of literally any of, except for Denzel Curry, um, Davies, and G G Erbo. I think they were all on that list. But. Yeah, the rest of that list, it was pretty pitiful to listen to at first, but few of those artists have actually bloomed, and they've become a lot better. Who, which one of them, like, who on that list that, that, that progressed, at least? So, bit? I would, the main two out of, like, the mumble rappers that have definitely progressed are Lil Uzi Vert. He's, he's done so much. I think the music he makes... Nowadays, for the most part, it's it's good to listen to. I enjoy it. It has a lot of, like, punk influence, like punk emo influence. And I really like that. Um, there's actually a few. Kodak Black, ex, he, he has made a huge name for himself. He has, like, a cult following. People love him. I enjoy a handful of his songs. So he's, he's done pretty well. Um, I don't have a whole lot of him in my playlist, though. Um, in 21 Savage, there are a few songs by 21 Savage that it's totally his niche that he should be doing. And it appeals to a lot of people. And yeah, he, I don't listen to him a whole lot anymore. But yeah, those, those three in particular, they kind of redeem themselves after that pitiful cipher. <laughs> True. Well, <clears throat> what do you think needs to uh change in hip hop that's what it, what you see wrong with hip hop now yeah i think we need to stop doing what the labels want you know it needs to go back to the raw music and not the image like the image still needs to be there that's part of being an artist but it shouldn't mm. mainly be about the image you know that's one thing most artists are missing. It's mostly that image that sells, that gets their music to sell. It gets people to listen. It's their image. And I think we, I don't think we are ever going to get away from that at this point. Everyone is so into the technology and into whatever culture is being shoved in their face. And I, I hope we could get away from it, but I don't, I don't see us getting away from that. Unfortunately, just with technology and the way labels run shit, it's it's too far gone. Mm, that's true. Yeah, it's a, that's unfortunate that like, you know, you see like, you know, indie artists in general, like from any genre, like it's basically now with like a lot of genres, it's just like image, just like a, a just any type, anything with a hook, and if the whole song is a hook then you know it's straight fire to everybody that's it it doesn't matter what it, what they're saying even if it's just like they can be saying what the fuck ever and people will eat that shit up bro that's especially popular nowadays with tiktok because with tiktok you could have like a 30 second clip of a song and it could trend on tiktok and it'll get millions of people to listen to your music the the whole song doesn't have to be good but because that one part trended on TikTok, you've blown up at this point, you know? It's a, it's a crazy thing. It, it's pretty cool that, uh, you know, I've noticed a lot of cool independent artists have been blowing up from TikTok. But my point is it doesn't take much to blow up nowadays. If you can make a meme out of the song, whether it's good or bad, it'll explode. That's very valid. That is very valid. It'll, it'll anything it's just as long as you like it's it's almost like you know when you like jingle something shiny in front of a child and they're like ooh, it's like that it's basically like that the whole image thing it's just yeah. like ooh. It, it's it's a little crazy it's a little it's a little unnerving to be honest with you and honestly like i think it's affecting my generation because those are those are the images that we see and that's all we want, you know? All we want is nice cars and money and Birkin bags and 
money to, to just blow and live life however we want. And most people don't have the work ethic to live like that. So they get caught up in this depression. They're like, oh, I'll never get to that point. You know, it, it hurts a lot of people, I, I feel like. It doesn't hurt everyone. Not everyone takes that shit to heart. But I think a lot of people, they, they set their minds on that lifestyle just because it's always shoved in their face. And they just, they don't, yeah, they don't go anywhere with it. They get well, stuck. That's very true, though, because a lot of these artists, it's like they flash around all this money. Some of them don't even have what they are flashing. They really, in, in, in reality, they don't, like in real life, they don't have that. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just funny. They're just trying to build an image and just have this image. And it's kind of crazy because nobody, that's all anybody's seeing, yeah, being influenced. I mean, don't get me wrong, back in the day, like, you know, 90s and two, early 2000s hip hop, there was artists like that. It wasn't every artist, though. But now it's just, it, it's just literally just, I don't know. It's a little ridiculous. It's too much to a point, I think. It, it's completely because of the internet, man. I mean, because the area you grew up in, the internet was, wasn't even close to what it is now. Oh, true. That's very, very true. Like, social media was not a thing at all. People weren't sharing shit with each other, really. You know, they would, like, email it to each other, text message each other, but... It wasn't, there wasn't a platform where people could share it and have their whole friends list see it and then them share it and have it go from there. It, it wasn't like that. But now shit goes viral in minutes. Oh, yeah. So it's going to go viral. It, this is the weird thing now with the internet and also with social media. It's things can go viral in minutes. But then it could be just like a, a dead issue within hours or maybe even the next day or two. You know, like some things, it's kind of crazy. Like some, some things may go viral and stick, but some things don't. It, it, it's weird how it works, you know? It, Everything is so short lived now. Everything is. We have, my, my generation in particular, we have such a short attention span for, for any stimulus. <laughs> like, we, especially when it comes to us being on our phones and like finding music and stuff. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, too, but in, in hip hop, the songs have kind of gotten shorter over the time with a lot of artists. Like, a lot of songs now are less than two minutes is because people don't listen to music that long anymore. They don't listen to songs that long anymore, especially with artists who aren't as lyrical. They kind of more rely on melodies and the beat. Their songs are a lot shorter. We have kind of a shorter attention span for shit now. Like, whatever's new, we always want what's new. Even if it's the next day, we always want the newest thing. Always. Mm. Oh, it's very true. It's very crazy. Um, you know, and it, and it just seems like a lot of them, a lot of, like, up-and-coming artists like that are, like, really troubled, but just acting acting in, a, in just a different way. Mm. But personally for you, how do you um, try to overcome mental struggle? I mean, I just try, man. I, I get up every day. I get out of bed and I just do what I can. You know, I, I really do have bad days. Recently, it's been more often than not. But I just I get up. I I take care of my animals and, you know, honestly, it's my, it's my animals, like my fish and my dog, they, they get me through, you know, it gives me a purpose every day. And sometimes music doesn't even feel like my purpose. Like that's how bad my depression gets sometimes. Like I, I don't feel like it's worth it, but you know, I do have my good days where I'll actually sit here and I'll record something. And honestly, the best songs that I've ever made, I've wrote in less than 30 minutes and fully recorded in less than two hours. So. Oh, shit. That's crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, I don't know if you've watched any other episodes on the show, but, um, what, like, uh, 
what, what I do towards the end is I ask, like, what guests would you want to see on this show? Uh, I just got into, I just discovered this, this other rapper uh, the other day. He apparently has been around for a while. His name is Jelly Roll. And uh, I think he'd be a good fit for this podcast. Um, right. he's, he's a very inspiring guy, too. Um, I think he would, he would embrace the whole, the whole trash culture thing. Um, yeah, I, I would like to see him on this podcast in particular, Jelly Roll. Yeah. Okay. Um, do, is there any, like, you know, anybody outside of the hip hop realm, anybody like with the, that has a hobby, a profession, like, you know, any, any, anybody like, you know, a business owner, anything? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can only think of one, my buddy, Alex. Um, he's master mechanic. He could work on any car. Um, he's been painting cars recently. Um, he's been through a whole lot of shit. He could probably tell you a lot of good stories and everything and tell you about cars if you like talking about cars. But honestly, man, I don't fuck with too many people. Like, especially after the pandemic, like it really weeded out the, the fakes and the real ones. So I don't talk to a lot of people, man. Simple right, as that. Bro. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's actually, well, that was a good thing, you know, like with everybody with the, with the pandemic, there was like the negatives, but then along came it with the positives, which, um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm assuming that was like one of your positives, you know, yeah. do, do you have other positives that came out of it or just. Um, not not really man like i'm still going through it at the moment you know i'm still processing all of it so i can't really see right now what positive i got out of it i'm still kind of hurting from it you know because it, it was really hard for me um because I, I graduated school in february of 2020 and literally right after i graduated right when i was supposed to get a job working in concerts and stuff COVID happened and concerts stopped happening. And uh, I tried to get audio work as an engineer and everything. And it's one of those things where like, they're looking for experience, but how can I get experience if you don't fucking hire me, you know? So it's, uh, it's been really rough. And unfortunately with the situation I'm in, even if I wanted to go back to working concerts and stuff, it wouldn't be enough for me because it's an on-call job only. Uh, it's not a full-time gig, so yeah, I'm just trying to figure shit out at the moment. I'm still young; I got plenty of time, but yeah, I'm kind of going through it at the moment. Word, word. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, what would your <clears throat> shout-outs be then? Who would you shout out? I know you got a small circle, like you said, but who would you shout out? Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely, definitely shout out my boy, Alex. I saw he was in here. Um, Aries is also in here. She's my ex, but we've stayed in touch. We're pretty good friends. Uh, she lives back in Missouri. Um, and I want to give a shout out to everybody who's going through something similar to what I'm going through. If you're diagnosed bipolar, diagnosed anxiety, anything like that, I don't know if you could tell, I've been a nervous wreck this whole time, struggling to answer questions. I believe in you. Uh, just get up every day, let your feet hit the floor, and do whatever you possibly can. Just whatever you possibly can to get through to the next day. Just do that. Shout out to all of you who are still here. Word, word. I was, <laughs> that's, uh, you, you kill two birds with one stone. Usually the next question that comes up is inspiring words, but you just hit that. Damn. Well, you know, uh, one thing I got to say, two, a couple things I got to say is, one, thank you for coming on the show, man. It was great having you. Two, um, you know, you're right with all the things that, like, you know, depression, anxiety, mental OCD. Like, you know, I, I've been through all that shit, too. You know, it is a big thing when you can get in your head and it's very tough. And just like you said, just get up and just keep going through the day because that's the only thing that you can get. Keep going through it to get through it is yeah. just keep moving. You, you, you stop. 
yeah, once you stop, it's just you're just stuck in it. Yeah, like you got to somehow get through it. it. It depends on like everyone goes through it at a different speed. It takes longer for certain people, but you will get through it as long as you keep moving forward. Just don't stop doing that shit. Just don't stop. Hell yeah, hell yeah, perseverance, bro. Yeah. So, you did a good job, bro. You didn't, you didn't have to be nervous at all, man. You know, you, you kind of you killed it. You, you answered everything like beautifully. So you know, you know, weren't tripping on your words really or anything. You know, sometimes on this podcast, I trip the shit out of my words, and I'm like, yeah. oh fuck, and it's like, bleh, bleh. so yeah. No, my main thing was like you were asking questions, and my brain was just bouncing. Like I couldn't think of answers. Like that was that was the main thing. But I I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you having me for real. No problem, man. No problem. So, guys, where can everybody check out your music? So, uh, right now, all my music is just on YouTube and SoundCloud. On SoundCloud, if you type in Topaz417, you will find me immediately. It's the first profile that pops up. Uh, my newest song that just came out is called Tough Times. It's on both YouTube and SoundCloud. Go check it out. It's one of the best songs I've ever made. Um, I'm really proud of it. Kind of brought me a little bit out of the funk that I've been going through. So I really hope you guys can enjoy it too. But yeah, YouTube and SoundCloud are my main two places that you can find my music. If you type in Topaz417 on either one of those, you should find me. Word, word. Everybody go check out this like Topaz's music, bro. This kid is a really good kid. Very inspiring kid also. Going through mad shit. And he's very intelligent, for especially for like the generation that he's in a sea of well, ignorance. And this is great to see also like, you know, a conscious, like, you know, a conscious and intelligent, you know, young adult still, you know, and that's great. And you'll only progress from there, dude. So all I got to say to you is keep pushing, man. Thank you for coming on again, guys. Thank you for checking out another episode of Trash Culture Podcast. Tomorrow we got Mark Valentino. So stay tuned for that. And like always, guys, stay trashy. Peace out, man.